Well, while she was gone, I saw on television that you can hold a thermometer up to a light bulb and actually raise the temperature. So I put a thermometer up to the light bulb, and then she walked away. She walked away for quite a while. And when I heard her coming back, I shoved it in my mouth. Man, was that thing hot? <laughs> um, so she comes back into the room, and she takes a thermometer out, and she says to me, Heat, if your temperature was this high, you'd be dead. Get dressed! You're going to school. I can't tell you how many of my plans were thwarted by the intelligence of my parents. Um, always had to go to school. Why did I have to go to school? Because my parents knew that it was important to get a consistent education. Um, so I had to go whether I liked it or not. Um, why? Because they knew it was an important part of, of growing up. And I know that you've been there too, and I know that you've been on either either side of the, uh, of the argument, the one trying to stay at home or the one forcing the kid to go. Because um, we all there, we're all there at certain points in time. What I, what I find interesting is we can easily justify forcing the kid to go to school because it's so important. I realize so many times that, that as Christians, we don't understand the necessity of going to church regularly. It doesn't carry over with the same level of importance. I thought that was so interesting. It was something that we've talked about today to try to figure out. So let's uh, start with a word of prayer. Dear Lord God, we thank you for today, for this moment, for this time. We ask that you would help us to just uh, pay attention to be open to whatever your spirit teaches us and willing to apply it. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. I think I've already explained to you that I feel like today is an exciting uh, Sunday. It's a, a Sunday where months and months of hard work finally pay off. A day where we will get to meet uh, downstairs in love and fellowship in our dry as a bone church basement. Um, that's what I'm excited for. I don't know if you know this, but they've actually declared in this area that if there's a flood, the basement of Trinity is the place to meet because we're the only place that's going to be above water at the end of the day. Um, that's how confident we are in the system that's been put in. Um, but but it, it's exciting because we get to you know, go downstairs and have fellowship today, then we get to, to have Sunday school downstairs. And the most exciting part of today is you don't have to go home and try to find something for lunch. I, I was expecting like an amen or an hallelujah, brother. None of that. Do you guys enjoy that, going to the house every day and trying to find something to eat for lunch or dinner? That's the worst part of adulting. I mean, the, the most horrible part is knowing that every night you have to find something to cook and to eat. Do you not find that to be the most frustrating part? So thank you, Matt, for agreeing with me. Um, so we, we get to go downstairs. We get to go downstairs and enjoy each other's company. And why, why is that a big deal? Why is opening the basement a big deal? For that matter... Why is it a big deal to have a church to, to be able to have a celebration in, in the first place? That's a really good question. I'll start by saying this. Do you know that between 70 and 75% of uh, people in the United States identify themselves as being Christian? No matter what the world says out there, between 70 and 75% when they're, when they're asked what their faith is, they tell you that they are a Christian. However, out of that 75%, only 20% make it to church on a semi-regular basis. That seems kind of crazy, doesn't it? 75 say I'm a Christian, 20% make it to church. And when you ask yourself, what, what's the reason that 80% of, of Christians are missing church? You get all kinds of different answers of what the reason is that, that they're, they're not going or able to go. And you get the obvious one, like, like work. I can't come to church because I have to work on something. I think that's a pretty decent reason. If your job requires you to be there, then, then you have to be there. There are things that need to take place on Sundays as well as the rest of the week. And then in addition to that, you get, uh, you get reasons like sickness, which is definitely a reasonable excuse. But that's, that's a minority of what's going on um, some of the time. The overwhelming majority of Christians who are missing church, it doesn't fall under these categories. No, instead, there's other reasons. That, that people have chosen to miss church. One, one of those things is sports. Sometimes we miss church because of sports. Um, and it seems like more and more kids' sporting activities and practices um, are, are taking place on Sunday. Because Sunday is just treated as if it's any other day of the week. You see, kids' sports used to not be able to take place on Sundays because parents wouldn't bring their kids out. They would say, you have practice on Sunday or a game on Sunday? No, no, that's ridiculous. That's the day that we go to worship God as a family. So they wouldn't bring them out, so the, the, the organizations couldn't have them on that day. But nowadays, parents lots of times 
attitudes to this church over missing the, the other activities. Um, that, that's, that's one of the reasons, but that's not that the only reason. There's other reasons. Um, one of the, the, the bigger reasons is because people get out of the habit of going. They do. Um, if you go steady and then miss a week, when you miss that week, you think, oh, it stinks. I really missed church this week. I've got to make sure I get there next week. But if you do it more than that, it, it starts with a week here or there. Then it comes to two in a row, then a whole month, and then it turns to an occasional week instead of an occasional miss. People just get out of the habit. It's one of the, the main reasons. And I hate to use the word habit there because it's a word that should actually be used there is discipline. Um, a habit is something that forms out of repetition. A discipline is something that you purposefully set aside and plan because that's the person that you choose to be. One of the other main reasons is that, that Christians, they choose to worship God in their own way. This is a big one with the millennials right now. Um, and in their own way, it sometimes happens to be television or internet, which is if you can't make it in person. Um, sometimes it turns out to be just an occasional nod in a heavenly direction. You know what I'm talking about? And if someday you pay God his due, oh man, I forgot. Hold on, give me a second. Hey God, what's up? All right, what else are we going to do today? That's, the, that's what in their own way generally turns to it. It, it generally becomes not really at all. And people have all kinds of reasons of why they don't go to church. And we always get to hear why people um, don't go to church. But you have to stop and ask yourself, what's so beneficial about it in the first place? Why do we put so much time and effort in the church to begin with? That, that's the question that, that I really want to answer today. So, uh, do me a favor. You got any pens in your purse or any pens in a few? I forgot to throw extra in a few, but I actually included uh, sermon notes right here. It doesn't say doodle space, but I would actually appreciate it if you would write down, because I'm going to give you a couple of words, and then I would like you to think later on these words to, to see what they mean to you in your individual situation, as I have uh, thought about what they mean to me in mine. Everybody have a pen? Ag has 50 in her purse. If, uh, if you do not have one, can you just toss them in that general direction? All right, so I'm going to give you actually eight reasons of why it is important for, for you to, to, to go to church. And I, I'm going to tell you these reasons of why church is important so that you know and understand why you are here. Because sometimes we know it in our hearts, but it's good to get it into our mind. So that you know why you should miss it when you're not here. And so that you know why you can invite others to be here. Because it's for very good reasons. Okay, so for very good reasons. First reason. Preaching. When you come to church, you get to hear firsthand God's word. And all you need to write down is preaching. And I don't like to explain to you what it means. <coughs> you write down whatever you want. But write down at least the, the word preaching. But number one is preaching. See, the reason that preaching is important is because you can read through a section of scripture a hundred times um, and, and just feel like you've got it. But then that one time that somebody else talks to you about that section, sometimes the Spirit is able to tell you things that, that you haven't actually realized on your own. And that's why Paul gives this command to Timothy. He says, preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. And the, the, the honest truth is that if we're, if we're going to be honest, we rarely do ever sit down on our own for lengths of time to study the Bible or, or what it has to say. I'm telling you, throughout the week, most of my time is, is a five-minute devotion. That, that's how much I dedicate to it. So coming to church has a, 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 a concise and, and good purpose of allowing the Word to enter into your body so that it can change you. Um, I bought Kato a guitar, what is it, like two years ago, but two or three? Yeah, and Terry says, like, three years ago, yeah. He, he has practiced on it probably like ten times um, in three years. Um, and here's the sad thing, he can be really good at it. I mean, really good at it. He started off a lot better than I did when I first started, but the problem is, is that he doesn't sit down and do it on his own. If we had paid for him to have lessons, then he would probably take it seriously because a dedicated time to study that is what is necessary. 
And that's the same thing with church. We come to church, hear God's word, and dedicate that time to really think about scripture for a small portion of the week. So preaching it is very important. The second thing is worship. Worship. When we gather together, we come here to participate in corporate worship. Why is worshiping so important? Well, Steelers game is on today, right? Anybody plan on watching that? After last week, I didn't think so. Um, so we, we probably will, but one thing that you can be guaranteed of is that the stadium will be, wait, are we at home or are we away? Home. Oh, the stadium will be full of Steelers, even if we're away, it would be. Um, the Steelers fans travel better than anybody else. But we live well, in a stadium full of Steelers fans. And you think, okay, why do these people take all this time out of their schedule to, to go to this stadium every week? I mean, think about it. They'd have a much better view on their living room TV. No matter where you're sitting at the stadium, the living room has a better picture. The beer at home is a lot colder and a lot cheaper. Um, so you got better refreshments. Um, the bathroom, <coughs> man, there's no obnoxious line, and you don't have to close your eyes while you're using it, pretending that you went to your happy place so that you don't look, take a look around you where you're actually going to the bathroom at. So you say, okay, why do fans show up then? It would be so much more pleasant at your house. It's because there's something special about being surrounded by people who think the same way you do and share your passions. That's what's special about corporate worship. Church gives us a chance to do just that, to worship God, our Father, together as one. And we can really feel Him here, feel His presence when we are worshiping. Matthew 18, 20, where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. He's right here, right now, wanting to, to meet with you, wanting to instruct you, wanting to inspire you. <coughs> Number three, iron. Iron. We come to church because iron sharpens iron. We gather together as a group of people to, to inspire to motivate, to help, to hold each other accountable. We carry each other's burdens, and we generally become better people because of our relationships together. If you aren't around others who you can learn from in, in, in this church setting, where are you going to find your mentors? I mean, I don't know if you've ever taken a good look uh, around uh, this church, um, but you are surrounded, surrounded by role models. And you yourself are a role model. I, I know that when you leave this place, people look to you for their inspiration and instead of the way around. And where can you find a better group of role models than right here in Trinity Church? I believe that with all of my heart. Where can you be honest with people about your weaknesses? To, to friends who won't judge you. I tell you every week I'm a bit of a schmuck I am. Uh, over and over and over again. But yet you continue to come back. Why? Because that's what love is about. Encouraging each other to be better tomorrow than we were today. How does that happen? Through our shared relationships. Because iron sharpens iron. Psalm 27, 17, it says, As iron sharpens iron, so one friend sharpens another. That's why we come to church. That's what we do for each other. The fourth thing is gifts. Gifts, and I'm not just talking about the occasional gift that you might receive at church. For example, an awesome brunch um, downstairs, or a Father's Day for a piece of meat, or a Mother's Day for a carnation. It's not just those gifts that we're speaking of. Instead, we're speaking of the gifts that you have, that you are offering to God by, by being a part uh, of this worship. Gifts that were given to you with the goal and intent of you using them Glorify God. See, church gives you a, a chance to do just that. Here's what 1 Peter 4.10 says. It says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. You've been given gifts so that you can glorify God through your service. And church gives you a very good opportunity to do just that. Number five, pastor. Bastard. Where else can you get such a good looking man who is also funny, intelligent, you know, all this? That's not, that's not what I'm talking about. Listen, 1 Thessalonians 5 12 says, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and 
who admonish you, hold them in the highest regard of love because of their work. You know, believe it or not, you may not know this, but pastors need encouragement that all the efforts they're putting into to taking Jesus out to this world, that it actually means something. I'll be honest with you, there is nothing that kills a pastor's spirit or slows momentum like empty pews. People don't understand how much of an effect that, that, that has on a pastor. Just, and I can't tell you how many pastor friends I have who are battling depression because the devil gets in their head and says, look at those pews. They're not full. Why, 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 are you, why are you even here? What are you doing? Somebody should be doing it so much better than you are. One of the best ways to keep a pastor healthy is actually by showing up on a Sunday. Why? Because that says, non-verbally, you're doing something that's worthwhile. We support you and, and want to be for you. We want to be there for you and for God during this ministry. Sixth thing, children. Just children. Your kids, your grandkids, your neighbor's kids, your kids, <laughs> they're going to learn in school about social stuff. Math. They're gonna, they're gonna gain all kinds of book smarts um, when you force them to go every day, whether they like it or not. But where are they gonna learn about love? Forgiveness, selflessness, self-control, sexual purity, honor for your father and mother. Where, where are they gonna learn those things? How can we justify that as parents, grandparents, and, and those uh, <laughs> just responsible for children? Can we justify forcing them to go to school, but then allowing them to skip church? I mean, when you when you think about it, it it's slightly ridiculous. If, if they have to skip something, it should honestly be the other way around. That that's the way that it should work. Matthew six twenty six I and mean, sixteen twenty six. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Folks, that's, that should be your number one goal in life. Number one. Because you think about it. Your kid, your grandkid could grow up and they could be a great athlete. They could be a smart man or woman. They can land a great job. They can make lots and lots of money. Hooray. Because of your encouragement and commitment. But if they don't know who Jesus is, it's pretty much worthless. And, and do you understand that? I'm not trying to make anyone feel, feel guilty because in the end, it's always your child's choice to choose what direction that they desire to go. And God will find ways other than just you to make sure that the Holy Spirit is in his life. But you have to understand that as parents, grandparents, friends of children, your number one goal should be to introduce them to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because that ranks above everything. And when you look at the scripture, Paul says everything compared to that is garbage, is manure compared to the knowledge of knowing Jesus Christ. Seven, impact. Impact. We gather together with the desire to make an impact on this community. And that's, that's what this church does out of love. I, I, I know that you know that because you respond to all of the ministry that offer love to, to this community. I'm not going to read that one to you, but it's, it's, it comes from Matthew. You're probably familiar with this. That's what church should be about. You know, back in the day, we didn't need to have a government who, who could help fund those who were downtrodden. Why? Because the church took care of that. At Trinity, we try to do our portion. We feed the hungry. We clothe the naked. We pray for the sick. We provide for the children. Out of love. The amount of generosity that pours forth from this church collectively is absolutely amazing. Amazing. Um, we, when we were made aware, when we're made aware of a need, the church just jumps into it. I mean, the head first just dives right into the deep end. We were just told about a little baby, uh, <coughs> Asia. Um, she was born super early, and she was coming home to a house that had nothing for her. In two days, in two days, we had strollers, car seats, bikes. Wipes, gift cards, toys, and so much more. In two days, together, we make a huge difference in the lives of people in a way that would be very difficult for us to do on our own. By the way, the little girl is home, and she's, she's doing great. The last thing, number eight. What's the reason? God says so. That's, that's the reason. God says so. The Bible tells us that we are to be meeting regularly. That's what our scripture this morning, the one that we, we skipped by, I wanted to give it to you here. 
because that's what our scripture says from Hebrews. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we might spur one another on <laughs> towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Oh, we talk about this is amazing. Um, we talk about that too. But encouraging one another all the day and more as the day is approaching. Let me close by saying this though. In our everyday lives, we must choose what we are going to do and what we're not going to do. We can't squeeze everything in. We just, we just cannot do it. it. It's impossible to put the amount of things in there that we're trying to get into. But as you prioritize what is important and what can be skipped, I just want you to remember how important attending church is to the health and well-being of the Christian. And if God truly is a priority in your life, then after hearing how beneficial church is to your relationship with them, make sure that that is where it needs to be in your priority attendance. So after this is done, I hope, I hope that you know why coming to church is important. I hope that you know why you, when you miss church, you should really miss church. And I hope you know why you can invite others to be a part of this. It is, it is an important part of a Christian's life. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for today, for this moment, for this time, and uh, for these reasons that come from your scripture, God, um, of why it is important to be an active part of corporately worshiping you. And we thank you for this church that you have given us to do just that. And God, we ask that you would help us to understand the importance, to appreciate the importance, and to share that importance with others. We pray this in Jesus' name.